the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa met President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, the President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, today in the city of Al Alamein, during which he, they affirmed the strength of the distinguished relations between the two brotherly countries. During the meeting, they discussed ways to continue working to enhance the framework and mechanisms of joint cooperation, including in the economic and development fields, in a manner that achieves the aspirations of the two brotherly people towards progress, stability, and prosperity. His Majesty the King and the Egyptian President also discussed regional and international developments and their aligned views regarding the importance of intensifying joint Arab action to confront the growing challenges in the region and the world, affirming their keenness to continue close coordination at all levels in light of the strong historical ties linking the two countries at the official levels. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf, Jasim Mohammed Libdewi, and an accompanying delegation at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister affirmed the importance of further strengthening joint GCC efforts and cooperation to create a more prosperous future for all. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of building on the Council's efforts in line with the far reaching goals and aspirations of GCC leaders. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad welcomed the GCC Secretary General to Bahrain and wished him success in his endeavors. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of increasing integration and cooperation between GCC countries to meet the aspirations of their citizens and consolidate global peace and development. For his part, Libdewi expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, highlighting His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's ongoing support of the long standing strategic partnership between member states of the GCC. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal al Malki, also attended the meeting. The Minister of Labor and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, Jamil bin Hamad Ali Hamidan, affirmed the government, led by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, is continuing to accelerate the rate of employment of Bahrainis in various private sector establishments. The minister said this is done by attracting more job-generating investments, enhancing the work environment, diversifying training and qualification policies, and providing many advantages and incentives for the private sector so that Bahrainis will be the first choice for recruitment in the labor market. The minister's statement came during the cabinet review of the labor market indicators in the second quarter of 2023, where he underlined that 14,163 have been employed between January and June at a rate of 71% of the economic recovery plan targets, which amounts to 20 20,000 hiring operations annually, stressing that this reflects the stability of the labor market and its growth towards generating more jobs in various productive sectors. Hamidan also said that the number of citizens benefiting from various training programs reached 7,237, which constitutes 72% of the declared goal of training 10,000 Bahrainis annually as part of the economic recovery plan. The Labour Minister noted that inspection campaigns were intensified to correct the conditions of foreign workers within the registered employment system, and he indicated that the campaigns would continue in cooperation with the relevant government agencies, praising the ongoing cooperation with the Interior Ministry. On wages of citizens working in the private sector, Maidan said that wages witnessed an increase of 6.3%, especially after the launch of several initiatives aimed at increasing the wage support and improving the level of wages of new employees in the private sector. The Ministry of Works announced the completion of the project to expand and develop the traffic light intersection on the Sheikh Salman Road in the Southern Governorate. The project falls within the third stage of the project to reduce traffic congestion at some intersections on the road network. The expansion and development works included adjusting the traffic signal on the road leading to Sheikh Hassa International School in both directions, as this expansion will contribute to facilitating traffic, reducing the waiting period and relieving pressure on the neighboring intersections in the area. The fourth edition of the Palm Tree Festival concluded at the Farmer's Market in Horat Ali with the participation of many farmers, agricultural companies, craftsmen and productive families. The festival featured national and patriotic songs performed by the Ministry of Interior Military Band as well as various exhibits by farmers, agricultural companies and productive families with a focus on foods from dates such as date jam, date ice cream and milk flavored with dates in addition to the various types of dates. The festival set up a commercial platform that contributes to encouraging and supporting local production and offers an ideal opportunity to exchange experiences which will reflect positively on the economy and contribute to strengthening food diversity. 
The Labor Market Regulatory Authority, the LMRA, confirmed the continuation of its coordination with various government agencies to address illegal practices in the labor market, noting the implementation of a joint inspection campaign with the Ministry of Interior and various governorates of the kingdom. The inspection campaign included visiting a number of shops, work sites and labor gathering places to determine the extent of compliance with regulations and laws, especially the LMRA law and the residency law in the Kingdom of Bahrain, where a number of legal violations were recorded. Now, as part of Aluminum Bahrain Alba's strategic initiatives under its Environment, Social and Governance Roadmap, Alba's Chief Executive Officer Ali Al-Baghali inaugurated Alba's Mangrove Nursery to mark the occasion of International Day for the Conservation of the Mangrove Ecosystem. Located at the oasis of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika in Alba, the Mangrove Nursery was set up for cultivation in February 2023. It is spread over an area of 800 meters squared and currently includes 12,000 mangrove shrubs, which will then be further expanded to accommodate 20,000 mangrove growth shrubs. Alba will collaborate with Bahrain Supreme Council for the Environment to become a primary source of mangrove shrubs for the various mangrove natural reserves in Bahrain. Alba's mangrove nursery project complements the company's financial support back in July of 2022 towards the efforts of the National Initiative for Agriculture Development for the development of Ras Sanad Mangrove Nursery Project. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is hosting in Jeddah a meeting for the national security advisors and representatives of a number of countries on the Ukrainian crisis. This meeting marks the continuation of the humanitarian initiatives and efforts exerted by the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, to communicate with the Russian and Ukrainian leaderships to reach a solution that will result in permanent peace. The meeting aims at reinforcing dialogue and cooperation through the exchange of views, coordination and deliberations at the international level to ensure a solution for the crisis through political and diplomatic means and in a way that strengthens international peace and security, sparing that with further humanitarian security and economic repercussions of the crisis. Meanwhile, Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky commended the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on hosting the meeting on the Ukrainian crisis, which constitutes a platform for holding negotiations regarding his country. Zelensky affirmed the significance of the meeting, stressing that the lives of millions of people in Africa and Asia and other countries depend on the velocity of achieving peace. He noted that his country is taking strides towards achieving peace, hoping that the talks will lead to a peace summit of global leaders. The UAE Foreign Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan held a telephone call with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi. The two foreign ministers discussed bilateral relations and comprehensive strategic partnership between their countries and ways to reinforce cooperation across all fields. Sheikh Abdullah hailed the deep-rooted strategic relations between the UAE and China, affirming his country's keenness on further developing cooperation and expanding partnership to serve the common interests of both countries and their people. The United Arab Emirates has urged the international community to exert more efforts to overcome the challenge of food insecurity. This came in a statement delivered by the UAE Minister of State, Noura al kabi before the UN Security Council. al kabi underlined that bringing food insecurity to an end is a collective endeavor and that no one should experience famine. She urged the global community to explore options and innovative solutions to tackle climate change, which is a key driver for the growing food insecurity. She emphasized that those disproportionately affected by food insecurity and climate change, particularly women and youths, must be a priority when drawing any response to the crisis. For the second day in a row, complete calm prevailed in the Ain El Hilwa Palestinian refugee camp in Sidon, southern Lebanon. According to local Lebanese news agencies, the ceasefire has been adhered to and that no breach has taken place, noting that political efforts are focused on completing the investigation committee's work, withdrawing gunmen from the streets and creating safe conditions for the return of the displaced to their homes in the camp. Armed clashes broke out since the beginning of last week, killing 13 people and wounding more than 60 others. The outgoing Prime Minister of Lebanon, Najib Mikati, had called on the commanders of the Palestinian factions to end the fighting, which constitutes a clear violation of the sovereignty of the country of the Cedars. The United States is pausing certain foreign assistance programs that benefit the government of Niger, but will continue giving humanitarian and food assistance. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the provision of U.S. assistance to the government of Niger depends on democratic governance and respect for constitutional order. A military junta overthrew Niger's democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum, and his government on July the 26th, the seventh military takeover in less than three years in West and Central Africa. West African defense chiefs have drawn up a plan for military action if Niger's coup is not overturned by Sunday. 
UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has announced the creation of new scientific advisory board to advise UN leaders on breakthroughs in science and technology and how to harness the benefits of these advances and mitigate potential risks. Guterres said his scientific advisory board will strengthen the role of the UN as a reliable source of data and evidence and provide advice to him and his senior management team. The advisory board will comprise seven eminent scholars. The primary objective of the board is to provide independent insights on trends at the intersection of science, technology, ethics governance and sustainable development. Through their collaborative efforts, the board and its network will support UN leaders in anticipating, adapting to and leveraging the latest scientific advancements in their work for people, planet and prosperity. The world's oceans set a temperature record in the past week with their surface hitting 20.96 degrees Celsius according to the European Union Climate Observatory data. The samples tested excluded polar regions. Oceans have absorbed 90% of the excess heat produced by human activity since the dawn of the industrial age. Globally, the average ocean temperature has been besting seasonal heat records on a regular basis since April. Experts say the ocean heat wave is an immediate threat to some marine life and are already witnessing coral bleaching in Florida as a direct result. The Joint Ministry of Monitoring Committee of OPEC Plus affirmed the current levels of oil production of the group and did not make any recommendations to change the output at this time. The 49th meeting of the committee reviewed the crude oil production data for the months of May and June and noted the overall conformity for participating OPEC and non-OPEC countries of the Declaration of Cooperation. The committee urged all participating countries to conform and fully adhere to the compensation mechanism. The committee also expressed its full recognition and support for the efforts of Saudi Arabia to support the stability of the oil market and reiterated its appreciation for the kingdom's additional voluntary cut of 1 million barrels per day, which had extended to the month of September. Since its very first celebration in 2012, each year on the 18th of December, UNESCO commemorates World Arabic Language Day, highlighting Arabic's legacy and immense contribution to humanity. The theme of Arabic Language Day 2023 will be Arabic, the language of poetry and arts. On World Arabic Language Day, UNESCO is encouraging everyone to celebrate not only a language, but also a culture, and more broadly emphasizing how much we need diverse perspectives. They are an invaluable treasure and the fundamental prerequisite for lasting peace. In the diversity of its forms, classic and dialect, from oral expression to poetic calligraphy, the Arabic language has given rise to a fascinating aesthetic in fields as varied as architecture, poetry, philosophy, and song. It gives access to an incredible variety of identities and beliefs, and its history reveals the richness of its links with other languages. Arabic has played a catalytic role in knowledge, promoting the dissemination of Greek and Roman sciences and philosophies to Renaissance Europe. It has enabled a dialogue of cultures along the Silk Roads from the coast of India to the Horn of Africa.